Hi guys, this is Vaish from Vaish IAS. So we are going to continue our spectrum series. Uh, chapter 1 and 2 was done. So please watch those videos in our playlist and then proceed to this video. So this is chapter 3, which is I think the smallest chapter in the textbook out of the 20 chapters. And uh, this is basically about the decline of the Mughal Empire. So you will be just learning a few important things which are important uh, with respect to prelims. I don't think a mains question can come up from this chapter but there are a lot of factual information about uh, the final 10 or 12 Mughal rulers and uh, some external invasions and uh, independent kingdoms which rose after the decline of the Mughals. Also there is a mention about a uh, few socio-economic conditions and what was happening in the society and what was happening around India during that time. So we will have a quick look at this chapter and finish, finish off it in just uh, about 10 slides I guess. So let's begin. So like you see this is the Kohenur diamond and uh, we know like it's not in India now so we'll see how it was gone out to in, out of India in this chapter. So decli decline of the Mughals. So like you know uh, the Mughal empire was established in 1526 by Babur and then uh, Humayun came, then Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan and then Aurangzeb. So up to this I think uh, almost everyone who studies history or know the basics of the uh, Indian uh, modern Indian history and Mughal king kingdom will know about them. But after Aurangzeb there were a series of rulers who just ruled maybe like uh, one maybe two years or five years or maximum 10 to 20 years. That is the maximum they could rule. So there were many reasons for their decline, many poor policies, many uh, external uh, invasions and all. So we will see that one by one. So external challenges. 1739 is the time when Nadir Shah, the Persian Empire or the Iranian Empire invaded India. So like you know Iran which is the at the west of India invaded India, took over Lahore, Lahore Kabul, Karnal and he is the one who took away the Kohinoor diamond peacock throne and 70 crore rupees as per tax. We are not sure how much true this data is because during that time 70 crore rupees would mean a very big amount which would mean thousands of crores if, when you compare it with uh, the modern day. So this is what is being given in all the history books. So this is what we have to believe. And uh, this is the Iranian empire. Similarly Durrani empire in Afghanistan. Uh, which was founded by Ahmad Shah Abdali. He also invaded India after the 1748-1750s time and uh, he was also another ruler whose invasions uh, led to the decline of Mughals. He took over Mughal kings, appointed officers and left in 1759. After setting up uh, a rule over here, he had gone back but uh, the Marathas who were rising at that time attacked them and took control. So, 1761 it is said that Ahmad Shah Abdali again came back, took revenge on the Marathas and this is actually the third battle of Panipat. We know the first battle of Panipat happened uh, when uh, Mughal Empire was established, then second uh, battle of Panipat happened when Akbar took over the Mughal Empire and now the third battle of Panipat in 1761 where the Marathas were defeated and they were actually, uh, it was actually the story of their decline which we will be learning later in the uh, next two or three chapters when we learn about the Maratha kingdom and the rise and fall. So this is two important rulers Nadir Shah and Ahmad Shah Abdali. We will see the timeline or the rulers or the Mughal rulers who were ruling at that time in the next slide. So you have to remember these two names Persian Empire Nadir Shah, Durrani Empire in Afghanistan Ahmad Shah Abdali. So this is a table which we have made for your easiness to remember or easiness to understand the entire flow because if you read uh, the spectrum textbook you will need to read 3-4 pages to understand the entire uh, chronology of the rulers after Aurangzeb and uh, it will be time consuming and also difficult to remember so we have made this table we have also posted this in our facebook page long back and uh, uh, many students have uh, given excellent feedback for such tables which we create so if you see the ruler names uh, I don't think anyone will remember these names in order 
or uh, you need and also there is no need to remember but there are certain happenings if you see in this uh, column the third column important points to remember for prelims there are certain events which you will be learning in detail in the next few chapters so it will be better if you know the names of the Mughal ruler who were in uh, rule who were in charge at that time because their policies were the ones which caused not only their decline but also the rise of the British in India so let's see I'll read it out one by one after Aurangzeb the first one was Bahadur Shah Bahadur Shah won actually because if you see the last ruler's name in the table it's again Bahadur Shah Zafar so Bahadur Shah Zafar this one I think almost everybody will be knowing because uh, during the 1857 revolt he was considered as the uh, ruler or he was considered as the supreme command or the center the central most power or representative of all the rebellions so Bahadur Shah Zafar uh, you will be knowing but the immediate ruler after Aurangzeb is also Bahadur Shah it was called Bahadur Shah 1 and this is the timeline 1709 to 1712 so if you see here it is he is the eldest son of Aurangzeb killed his brothers to become ruler so uh, this was one reason which we will be discussing later then when we list down the reasons for Mughal decline uh, one reason is this thing uh, there were conflict between who will become the ruler after a particular ruler died uh, initially there was no such issues because if you see uh, Humayun was the eldest uh, son of Babur uh, Akbar was the eldest son of uh, Humayun and they took over power without any conflict so but later after the Aurangzeb era or even during the Aurangzeb era um, uh, the sons of rulers started fighting with each other just for the sake to be uh, become the emperor so here they like you see killed his brothers and became the ruler Bahadur Shah one. so what he did is he tried during his time he tried to make peace with Rajputs, Jats, Marathas who were the neighboring uh, small small uh, rising kingdoms because uh, during the time of Aurangzeb there were many bad policies uh, against uh, the other kingdoms or other religions and all and so there were problems with other kingdoms so Bahadur Shah in his a short span of three years tried to make peace but it was not successful to a large extent after him it is uh, Jahandar Shah he is important because you have to remember this name Zulfikur Shah Zulfikur Shah has been asked in prelims because of the reason he was the one who helped Jahandar Shah become the ruler after Bahadur Shah and also he introduced reintroduced actually Izara system and he abolished the Jazia Izara system is actually a revenue farming method or a system which was there during the Mughals time it was actually it came uh, some Mughal rulers would uh, follow it some would abolish it so it was like uh, being introduced every now and then so uh, Shah Jahan's time I think it was at its peak and after that it was uh, it went down during Aurangzeb time and again Zulfikar Shah who was like a prime minister to Jahandar Shah reintroduced this system so that the finances of the system could be improved and the uh, system could uh, revive or the empire could revive and he abolished the Jasiya system. Jasiya is actually a tax a tax which is taxed on the non-Muslims so it, because it's not good to tax a particular section alone uh, in the name of religion it was abolished so uh, like you see the rulers are trying to do good things so that the system could be revived and Mughals could retain the power but when you see the timeline it's just one year which he ruled so this is because each time someone else will try to push them off the throne and take power through efficient uh, prime ministers like this or noble personalities we'll see again a lot more to come uh, like Farooq Siyar this is very important also in the last video we had seen this name because of a blunder which he did he gave the right of minting coins to the British which was actually one very important reason for the rise of British in terms of trade and uh, acquiring positions around uh, Bengal like here you see uh, give, gave Farman to Britishers trade benefits Sayyid brothers this is a name again uh, of two brothers the group Sayyid brothers they call it they were called kingmakers it was actually asked in prelims who are called the kingmakers or like whose time it was it was during Farooq Siyar actually he, Sayyid brothers is the one who made Farooq Siyar the ruler Again, they continued abolishing the Jasya system and pilgrim tax, pilgrimage tax, and all. Sayyid brothers themselves dethroned and killed him with the help of Peshwa Balaji Vishwanath. So, see, like you see, Sayyid brothers 
first they helped Farooqsi had become the ruler. After that, later they uh, got in terms with the Peshwa Balaji Vishwanath, the Marathas, and then again killed Farooqsi and dethroned him. So uh, uh, he was killed by his own nobles, Farooqsi. The timeline is almost six years. You don't need to remember the years. I'm just mentioning just for your understanding and to understand the flow of how the Mughal rulers succeeded one after the other. The next two rulers are not at all important. Like I think few months only they were in uh, power. Both were weak rulers and they died because of uh, various ailments and all. Not at all important to remember. They, he was given the title Shah Jahan II. Like this, everything will come. Akbar II will come. Alamgir II will come. Shah Jahan III will come. So they took up titles just to maintain the chronology. Not at all important, you don't need to remember these names. You can remember, if, if a map the following question comes, you should remember these things. Zulfikar Shah related to Janadar Shah. Sayyid Brothers is related to Farooq Siyar. So these kind of match the following questions can come. Mohammed Shah, if you see here, the timeline is quite bigger. But he was not an efficient ruler or something. He was actually known for his luxurious lifestyle and is often called Rangila. So this again, I, UPSC can form statements of the, if they decide to make a question out of the final 10 rulers, they can pick up statements like this. Who was the one who was killed by his own nobles? That would be Farooq Siyar. Who was uh, uh, known for his luxurious lifestyle? That would be Muhammad Shah. So if you see here, killed the Sayyid brothers with the help of Nizam al -Mulk. So again, new new characters are coming along with each personalities. So Nizam al -Mulk helped them and uh, killed the Sayyid brothers and then Muhammad Shah became the ruler. And this Muhammad Shah is important because th this time when Nadir Shah invaded India, took away the Kohanur and Peacock throne. So if you see, Muhammad Shah becomes important for that reason. And this is also the time when independent states were breaking off from the Mughal Empire. Because the rulers were weak, they could not have a complete control over entire India because they had that much territories in possession. So uh, under each uh, noble person like the Nizam al Mulk or different different prime ministers, they started uh, sub, uh, what to say, getting divided from the central power. So this is the time when independent states like Bengal, Punjab, Awadh, Hyderabad came into existence. We will look into detail, uh, look into these uh, states in detail in the next few chapters. But as of now, just for understanding sake, Muhammad Shah was a ruler when these states broke up from the center. Next is Ahmad Shah, again weak ruler. I don't think it's important, it's just a line mentioned in spectrum. He gave state away as to the, actually the queen was controlling, the mother was controlling the uh, kingdom with the help of uh, Javid Khan not at all important. Alamgir too. He is important because that is the time when Ahmad Shah Abdali invaded India. Like you know, Nadir Shah and Ahmad Shah. Two, were the, two external invasions were important. So if you need the contemporary ruler at that time, it is Muhammad Shah and Alamgir too. And if you see the timeline, 54 to 58, this is the time when Battle of Plassey happened. So it was during Alamgir too strain that uh, Battle of Plassey happened. Shah Jahan III, again weak ruler, nothing important. Shah Alam II, this name you would have heard because uh, when you learn the Battle of Buxar, this name, uh, this name will be mentioned because a tripartite alliance was formed between the Mughal ruler, the Avad ruler and the Bengal uh, Mir Qasim. So that time Shah Alam II, I think most of you would be knowing. Again, anyway, we will be doing Battle of Buxar later. But uh, just remember, Battle of Panipat, Battle of Buxar was uh, fought during this time. Akbar II. Why he is important? Because he was the one who gave title of Raja to Ram Mohan Roy. And that's how he is called Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So the title was given by Akbar II, who is the second last ruler. And he stopped minting coins with Mughal ruler name on it. So the Mughal coins, they had the ruler's name or picture on it, but it was stopped during his time. So these are two important facts. So we are actually picking up facts like this because we cannot take a chance when it comes to UPC prelims. They can form statements based on anything. So because in detail Spectrum has a chapter for this, we have to cover this. So uh, that is all about Akbar too. And the last one, we will be learning again during 1857 revolt, which will be I think 6th or 7th chapter. He was the last Mughal ruler. Mughal Empire ended in 1858, once queue in Victoria declared the same. So officially it came to an end after the 1857 revolt. 
and when the government of india act 1858 came into existence so this is how the uh, this is what is important you don't need to read spectrum at all if you follow this table because i have picked up every important point possible uh, related to these people so, so any mcq which can come can come only from this table okay so now we'll see uh, the causes which can be a main question so you can note down i think eight or nine causes are there important causes we uh, i'll just mention the points you can make a note of it <coughs> two major reasons which historians debate are one is weak rulers which already we have seen in the previous table empire politics they were fighting with each other so there was no one to properly rule or govern the empire then instability in different parts of the empire like we saw uh, states are breaking away the other people like the zamindars and all will try to capture land for their own purpose so many things will happen which we'll see factors so the first is shifting allegiance of the zamindars so the zamindars were trying to own and control land by themselves because the rulers were weak there is no one who is going to uh, track each and everything what the zamindars is doing so that is the time when zamindars were rising and uh, trying to dominate over the peasants jagirdari crisis jagirdar system is an important system during the mughal ruler uh, mughal rule like uh, they had a rank of like mansabdar subedars and all so they what they do is they uh, instead of giving salary they'll also give salary but also they'll give a portion of land or a piece of land as uh, for their uh, services so uh, like imagine like uh, mughal rule is have been started from the 1500s and uh, each time you give a piece of land at one point of time the land will get over there will be no land to distribute to these people so jagirdari crisis refers to that the more and more uh, officers were appointed the more and more land was allocated and finally there came a stage where we could they could not proceed more so that crisis is called jagirdari crisis and they also started um, what to say rebe uh, rebelling against the empire so the empire was becoming weaker because the officials were against them the zamindars were against them third one is economic and administrative problems the kingdom became too large to be centrally administered no new land left to be given to mansabdars as jagirs so this is what exactly the second point which we mentioned so these are the first three points we'll see again next one fourth point weak rulers followed out on the day we have already seen that table with a lot of weak rulers fifth one no clear rule of succession the princes the prince fought against each other so again like we told it's not like the eldest son will become the next ruler they always had a fight and then that again uh, affected the stability of the entire mughal empire aurangzeb was not secular as his predecessors like if you see akbar uh, jahangir shah jahan they were known for their secular nature they had not interfered in any other religion they did not uh, do any taxation against other uh, non muslims or anything so but when it came to aurangzeb he had introduced lot of taxes or his policies were pro muslim so you can say and it was he was not at all a secular person so again the people started hating the hating their own ruler weak rulers led to degeneration of nobility and the army again the same almost the same thing the nobles the army men everything was starting to have their own mind they were starting to do things as per their wish and not according to the uh, mughal rules aurangzeb deccan policy this is one big blunder which is being told uh, by historians done by aurangzeb he invested a lot and uh, tried to capture the regions uh, below the uh, narmada river in the deccan region and he invested a lot but everything ended in failure and it led to a total financial crisis so without finance obviously uh, an empire cannot sustain then invasions of iranian durrani kingdoms which we already told the uh, iranian empire uh, led by nadir shah who took away the kohinoor diamond the durrani kingdom uh, that is afghan uh, region ahmed shah abdali came to india even defeated the marathas also so ahmed shah abdali can be told to be the reason to uh, reason for the decline of both the moguls and the marathas just remember that point 10th point rise of regional aspirations like i told many other uh, small small kingdoms were rising 
at the time when uh, after Aurangzeb, at the time when Mughals were declining, the Jats, the Sikhs, the Marathas, everything in detail we'll be doing in the next chapters. But just remember, many regional aspirations had uh, rise in that time. Uh, then two definitions actually, which is related to the Maratha Empire, which was mentioned in the textbook here. So you can make a note of it. Chaut and Sardesh Mukhi are different uh, two names of different taxations. Chaut, as the name suggests, it's one fourth of gross revenue to be paid to the Maratha by an alien state. So Maratha used to tax other states, like one fourth of their production should be given to them. It's like you give us tax so that we don't invade you. That is the meaning of Chaut. And Sardesh Mukhi is again taxation and it's an additional tax like a cess in the modern days. It takes additional 10% tax on the Chaut. So one fourth they'll already take and again 10% on that. That is Chaut and Sardesh Mukhi mainly implemented by the Marathas. So these 10 points would make a good uh, uh, answer for you if you are being asked the causes of decline of Mughals. You can add it up with the uh, names of few rulers which we have seen in that table. Uh, so that's how you form the answer. So regional states, we have mentioned a lot of times about regional states in the previous slide. So main important three regional states are Awadh, Bengal and Hyderabad as you see in the map. Or we can actually categorize it in three headings, successor states, independent states and new states. So successor state means these uh, broke away from the kingdom but they did not but they still uh, saw the Mughal as their uh, sovereign head. So they did not challenge or fight against the Mughals but with the Mughals permission they set up small small enclaves kind of kingdom at different regions. So that is Bengal, Awadh and Hyderabad. Independent kingdoms is like uh, they, ha they were not ruled by the Mughals and uh, they were not bothered about the Mughals too. They had their own kingdom, their own kings and because the uh, Mughals were uh, too busy fighting with each other, nobody was there to overlook these independent kingdoms. They are the Mysore, Kerala and Rajput. Mysore is actually, you will learn a lot because Anglo-Mysore wars are there, Tipu Sultan is there and in Kerala we have a few rulers and kingdoms for themselves and they did not have any much conflicts with the uh, uh, British or the uh, Mughal Empire. There are few occasions or few scenarios which you will be seeing later but not much. And new states are the ones which independently rose by their own uh, army or their own power or military tactics and they were actually rebelling against the Mughals because they wanted to overpower the Mughals and wanted to expand their kingdom. So they are the Marathas, Sikhs and Jats. So this is how regional states, which can be a potential question for names about the rise of regional states, this is how you have to uh, form the skeleton of your answer. Successor states, independent states and new states. And everything we will see in detail. In the next slide I will show you or uh, tell you prelim based massive following items which can come out of these states. Regional states, prelims perspective. Hyderabad. Hyderabad is actually called the dream of Zulfikar Khan. He was the one who wanted a state of Hyderabad. If you remember Zulfikar Khan, he was the Prime Minister of Jahandar Shah, the second ruler after Aurangzeb. And he was the one who helped him become the ruler. So, but he, it was only a dream or what he wanted to achieve, but it was actually fulfilled later by Nizam ul Mulk. This name also you have seen in the table. See, uh, you can pause or you can go back and see again during whose time Nizam ul Mulk was in uh, as a noble, he was available in the court. Hyderabad, Awadh and uh, the third one was Bengal. These three are the names which I told which are successor states. So the names if match the following that the maximum can come, so only that I have mentioned. This again, I think this particular slide is going to be a lot of like content rich and it is actually six or seven pages in the textbook. So in one slide you get all the information so you can remember them or you can go through it again just before prelim so that if even if a small statement or nasty following question comes you can answer it. So Awadh was founded by Sadat Khan whose another name or title was Burhan ul Mulk. So Buran ul Mulk, Nizam ul Mulk, lot of names are there. You should at least know which state they are related to. Nizam ul Mulk is Hyderabad, Buran ul Mulk, Sadat Khan is Awadh, and Bengal is a very important thing which we have lots to learn later. So the, these are the names in order of the rulers. Mushid Kuli Khan who founded it as separate uh, kingdom, Shujauddin, Sarfaraz Khan, Ali Bardi Khan. So these people are important because uh, later you will learn the Battle of Plassey, Battle of Baksar and all. So these three are successor states. Now about the uh, 
independent ones mysore kerala jats six marathas so mysore if you see bodaya dynasty that was a dynasty in power that time and later uh, one general hyder ali takes over power and his son tipu sultan controls uh, sorry takes over again and uh, this we in detail we learn mysore because we have a lot to learn about their conflicts with the british so just remember the dynasty name bodaya dynasty in kerala the important ruler was marthanda varma uh, his region was from kanyakumari that is in the southernmost tip of india to cochin that is in, uh, almost in the middle of kerala Uh, capital was at Travancore. So, the, like basic facts, just for the sake of match the following, Jats they were basically agriculturist and uh, important names are Churaman and Badan Singh, and uh, it was at its zenith or at its peak during the time of Suraj Mal. So, Suraj Mal, if anyone asks which is which kingdom or which uh, group he is related to, it's the Jats. And these are the regions of. regions where they came to power or tried to come to power agra meerut mathura aligarh six uh, actually uh, guru gobind singh uh, like there are 10 uh, gurus like if you know right from guru nanak 10 gurus are there we'll make a separate table for you later so that you know the names in order uh, but after the 10th guru it started to form a militant sect kind of thing which was more focused on protecting their religion and literature and their books and scriptures and all so uh, banda bahadur uh, who was the leader he was killed in 1708 and uh, obviously when some conflict arises uh, there will be a group on one side and group on other side and someone will try to overpower the other so sikh tried to form their own kingdom and this kingdom was later divided into 12 confederacies or 12 groups which they call as the missiles this also can be a prelims question missiles or which was the kingdom which divided their kingdom into 12 groupings so that is uh, banda uh, sorry that is the sikh sikh kingdom and uh, the most important ruler of the sikh kingdom which you will learn later is ranjit singh who was involved in the treaty of amritsar later and uh, died in 1839 that's even before the revolt of 1857 and all uh, sikh kingdom was like uh, declining Marathas have a lot of uh, groupings within them like the Peshwas is the most important and uh, we have the Holkars in Indore or the Gaikwads there are a lot of groupings which we we'll make a table again later in the, when we learn about the Marathas uh, but you have to remember they were the regions not only in the present uh, Maharashtra but uh, regions of Gujarat the Malwa plateau these were the regions where Marathas were in power and uh, they their decline as i told they lost in the third battle of panipat to ahmed shah abdali so that is the end of maratha so these in this slide and the previous slide i think we have a big or uh, good coverage of the entire regional states a skeleton at least and in detail of each state we will be again dealing in the next chapters so get used to it and uh, try to get an idea so that it will be easier when we go into detail or when we zoom into each of these states later now we'll see two slides about the socio economic conditions in india when mughals were declining because for a long time it was the mughals even the british came it was the mughals who ruled india and they actually lived in india and became part of us they did not like like the british has done like they have uh, done trade and uh, taken lot of uh, rich uh, rich uh, resources and treasures back to europe but uh, the mughals actually stayed here they lived here and they became part of us so the socio economic conditions will obviously relate to how their uh, kingdom will perform so the mughal were declining so we'll see how was the social and economic conditions in india so economic conditions started to get poor because of uh, different bad policies and uh, unwanted taxations people were oppressed the agriculture was technically technically backward huge taxes miserable life of peasants because uh, like we saw in the previous slide zamindars had their own mind when the rulers were becoming weak so obviously the entire burden will be on the peasants or the uh, farmers so that is about agriculture trade and commerce india more exports than imports so this is one important point even uh, if you see if you listen to the speeches by shashi tharoor in these recent days about his book he is mentioning the same thing india was one of the richest or not one of the i think the richest country during that time 
everyone wanted a land in india every european power or every invader they came to india right from the time of alexander because they wanted the treasures in india so like you see india had was doing more exports there was no deficit at that time that much rich was india but now it has changed they exported opium rice textiles indigo pepper silk spices and imported silver gold dry fruits honey coffee most of the tra internal tra incoming trade or import was from uh, the afghan regions or the um, regions around the persian empire trading centers so these are trading centers i think it's almost located everywhere every um, side of india dhaka murshidabad in the eastern side patna surat ahmedabad baraj agra mathura lucknow masuli patnam visakhapatnam and even the south Uh, Bangalore, Coimbatore, Madurai—they had trading centers almost everywhere at that time. Shipbuilding, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Bengal. Education. Traditional education was uh, being promoted at that time because British had not yet come. Religion, philosophy, law, literature, but there were no sciences at that time. They were more into philosophical learning or spiritual learning. Patshalas and maktabs. These were actually names of the Uh, like maktabs is i think it was the name given to the uh, centers where elementary education was given chaturspatis tals madrasas and these are again uh, higher centers like uh, maktab was uh, elementary education and chaturspatis was higher education higher learning so these are just terms which i think again upsc can pick up and ask you a question like chaturspatis chaturspatis in the 18th century refers to what so you can remember maktabs were uh, elementary education and chaturspatis were uh, higher education centers patshala and madrasa so obviously you can understand from the names it's common even now social conditions so the caste system was again dependent it was uh, like you know like india when uh, the history 8000 10000 years ago when we had the industrial civilization of the harappan age and all we did not have caste problem it is later when the aryans invaded or the aryans started and the vedas started being written that is when the caste system actually originated and it is actually the main reason for the all kinds of troubles in india every now and then each uh, uh, community comes for asking for caste or caste reservation it's happening for each and every state each and every election time each and every political uh, conflict the caste system has evolved over time and it is not actually the uh, basic essence of india but it has now become the essence and become the major problem for india so caste system they had sub caste different sect the society was patriarchal the four varna system were there the brahmana kshatriya shudras vaishyas they had the uh, different sect which were all uh, they had uh, their own lifestyle they did not interfere in each other's thing and the uh, shudras obviously had the problem which now the modern day dalits have so intercaste marriage and even dining they would they would not even uh, share the same place to eat that much was uh, the caste system depend into the indian system panchayat enforced caste norms even uh, caste system was prevalent in uh, hindus majorly and in the muslims there was shia sunni conflict and also region wise conflict that is the turks afghans indian they were fighting against each other the indian muslims were fighting with afghan the afghans with the turks so they had their own problems again these are names sharif muslims who were like the higher caste like the brahmans in uh, hindu or something noble scholars and all they looked down on the ajlaf muslims which is considered lower caste among them so these are just terms sharif muslims and Uh, and left muslims women also had a different kind of living uh, when it comes to upper caste and lower, upper class and lower class upper class was more within in their homes they did not have to go out to work they had uh, every facilities everything within their uh, uh, place of residence itself but the lower class they had to work on the fields the agriculture sector the uh, rare to our system and all which we will learn later the uh, women and men equally worked on the field when it comes to lower class then all the social eagles were prevalent at that time the parda system sati system child marriage polygamy everything was there 
and uh, uh, due, after I think 17th century or 18th century a lot of social leaders will uh, rise like Raja Ramon Rai being the first and the most important which we'll be learning in the chapter related to that so but meanwhile when the Mughals were ruling or they were declining all these social evils existed and they were existing in um, what to say at a very high level at its peak dowry was widespread then uh, Raja Savai Jai Singh he tried to promote widow remarriage but failed so there were people who were trying to uh, go against these kind of norms but uh, whoever tried have only failed slavery after advent of Europeans slave trade occurs in India so 1498 Vasco da Gama came 16th uh, 17th century the British came so when these people were started to come parallelly slave trade was starting to rise in India art architecture and culture new schools of painting started so when the kingdoms were separating from the Mughal Empire the Rajputs the uh, Himalayan region there were small small enclaves which not only started to rule for invasions or territory but also gave focus on their architecture or cultural uh, taste so these are different schools of paintings which we'll be learning in detail in art and culture Rajputana, Kangra paintings and all so just make a note of it as a point and uh, Raja Jai Singh who is related to Jaipur he is the one who built the pink city Jaipur city he was actually a very uh, much more forward person who did a lot of things or tried to do a lot of things uh, he was against a lot of social evils uh, he built five astronomical observatories which was f far too what is it, weird to imagine at that point of time like Indians involved, Indian rulers involving in sciences so this is one important point you can remember who was the ruler who built five astronomical observatories in India it is Raja Jai Singh who built the Jaipur he prepared astronomical timetables which is called by this name which is mentioned in spectrum Jich Muhammad Shahi so in case some question as the following something comes you should remember astronomical timetables and observatories are related to Raja Jai Singh Asafud Daula he built the Bada, Bada Imam Bara at Lucknow this again these are just points which I picked up which can be helpful for Maxi following in Kerala famous Patmanaburam palace is there which is there in the news also because a uh, lot of treasure have been found in the cells or the underground cells in that temple so it becomes important it's in Kerala and it's famous for mural paintings so again it is important with respect to art and culture because there was once a question uh, with uh, four options and uh, the question was uh, where all can you find the mural paintings in India so this can be one site Padmanabharam palace in Kerala literature Urdu and many other poets Mir Sauda, Mirza Dalib these are names again of the famous poets at that time so socio-economic conditions we have seen the bad side as well or the good side whatever happening in the society at that time when Mughals were ruling and declining so this can be just pointers which you can use in your answer Malayalam again these are names Punjan Nambiar, Tamil, Sitar poetry so like this UPC has a habit of picking up terms like this Sitar poetry was related to which sector or which section of India so it was Tamil Nadu Punjabi, Heer Ranja, Sindhi, Risalo Risalo so they can ask like which language was Risalo published something like that so Sindhi language it was okay so that was all because this chapter as I said it's just the decline and what was happening across a general holistic view of what was happening in India how the states were breaking apart everything will be zoomed in now in the next few chapters and the fourth chapter onwards is going to be very bulky maybe we'll have to do it in two three parts each chapter so we'll see we'll surely do it we'll take all the important points just like this and make you memorize or make you understand the entire conceptual uh, uh, part of modern Indian history. We'll see some MCQs based on what we have done today. All the three questions today I have uh, taken based on the rulers Ahmad Shah Abdali invaded India during the reign of which Mughal emperor. I have told you already you can go back see the video and answer it if you are not remembering it. Next is identify the Mughal ruler based on this. The battle of Baksar was fought during his reign. 
The third battle of Panipat was fought during his reign. He gave Diwani rights to British over Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa. So at least one statement, if you know who is related, then you can answer this question. Again, it's mentioned in the table which I sh which I have shown you, so you can again see it. Then the last question is, which is the first Mughal ruler to be killed by his own nobles? This also we have covered. So the nobles, I'll tell you, it was uh, uh, Sayyid uh, brothers, I guess. So you have to find out who is the ruler and try to answer these three questions because only when you interact with us, we will be able to uh, create more videos because we, uh, we will know like it's being benefited to many of this. So try to answer the question in the comment section. We will uh, come up with the fourth chapter soon. But uh, please see it in order. Don't see 3, 2, 1. They always see the videos in order 1, 2, 3 and then uh, we will look at the fourth chapter. So this is our Facebook page, facebook.com by Shaiyas. You can like the page and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you will get all the information. And also you can purchase or get the prelims uh, MCQs of all the subjects, subject twice with the answer key uh, by contacting our Facebook page. So that's all for today. Thank you. Have a nice day.